Welcome. Today we'll talk about the number one best Facebook advertising strategy every financial advisor and planner needs to know. So let's go straight into it. So today we'll talk about the number one best Facebook advertising strategy every FA and FP needs to know about. This is the strategy that the most successful people advertising on Facebook and Facebook agencies, millionaires like King Kong, which is uh, the fastest growing agency in Australia, people like Alex Ramosi, which is who is the CEO of acquisition.com, is the writer of the book 100 million offers and 100 million leads, even other books, have used to generate millions of dollars. So since it's worked for, it has worked for them, it has worked for millions of other people, millions of millionaires, then it will work for you as well. So put on your seatbelts, because this is going to be a crazy ride, after which you will have an insight to know to how the most successful Facebook advertisers generate millions. So that's yeah, that, that's King Kong, that's Alex Ramosi, sure you know, uh, at least Alex, anyway. So by the way, if you don't know me, my name is Matej, but you can call me Matt. And I run a Facebook advertising agency called Copyfina. <clears throat> in Copyfina, we help fa uh, financial advisors and planners generate 15 to 25 new clients in 90 days without you having to lift a finger. Okay, so you ready? That's me, that's Copyfina. Let's go. So today we'll be going through number one, un understanding your dream client. Number two, the bait of the millionaires. Number three, number three, crafting the bait. Number four, acquiring your dream client's contact info. Number five, your monster offer. Number six, traffic. And number seven, email, email stakeholder. By the way, don't worry, you don't need to take any notes because I made a full free Notion template for you. So down below there will be a link uh, for it. There is no email sign up, no anything. It's completely free. You can just click it and it's yours. So uh, it's everything we will talk about today in a written format. So you can just go there. Again, no email sign up, completely free. So down below. All right. So let's go straight into the first part of today's video, which is understanding your dream client. So I made this um, pyramid for you. This is a concept I got from a book called Sell, called Sell Like Crazy. So in every market, you have got this uh, pyramid. And at the top of the pyramid are the top 3% of all of your prospects that are always ready to buy. There are just always 3% of prospects that are ready to buy. 17%, which are the second, uh, second layer, are the ones that are aware of the problem they are aware of the situation that they are in and they are looking for information because they have an idea of what the solution might be. So they are basically solution aware and they are looking for information on which solution is the best one. Then there's the third layer, which is problem aware. These people aren't aware of the situation, of the solution to their problem, but they are aware that they have a problem. So in this case, uh, let's say we have a problem of... Um, they want to retire... 20 years early. So the problem, that is a solution. The problem is that they don't want to work till they are 70. The people at the top are the top 3% of all the people. They are ready to buy. They know that, let's say you are providing the services that will get them to retire early so they don't have to work till 70 years old. So these top 3% are the people that are ready to buy from you your services straight away because they know that you can deliver. These 17% who are looking for information they know that they don't want to work till they are 70. They know that what they need are some financial services that will allow them to retire, let's say, 20, 30 years earlier. And so they are looking for the best financial advisor. Then there are the third layer, which are problem aware. They, have, they, they are aware that they have a problem. They know that they don't want to work till they are 70, but they don't know what, he, what to do yet. They don't even know that they need the financial service to uh, help them through to get through this and to help them retire earlier. And at the complete bottom are the 60% of all of the market, which have got no idea they even have a problem. So they don't even know themselves that they don't want to work till they are 70. And so your goal is to advertise to all of them. Your goal is to get all of these people to buy from you. Because if you target just the top 3% who are ready to buy straight away from you, then you're only getting the 3%. And so let's say that those 3% represent three clients, let's say we have got 100, 100 prospects, three of them are ready to buy. So you would get three clients, which is pretty good, right? But if you take all the pyramids, the entire pyramid, that's 100, 100%, 100, 100 clients, so you could get 100 clients. And so what do you think is better, three clients or 100 clients? I would say it's 100 clients. So don't advertise just to this top 3%, but advertise to all of them. And your goal is to uh, show the problem to the ones that don't know about their problem you need to make them problem aware 
you need to make these people who are problem aware solution aware and once you so they basically go like from this stage you move them to this stage you show them the problem then from this stage you move them to this stage where you show them a solution that this is the solution to their problem they need financial services and once they are all in this group you move them towards the top and where you show them that what they need is financial services and they need specifically your financial services and that way you can move the entire pyramid to the top and it will be top 100 percent and all of this will be zero percent so this is basically the pyramid of the entire population of people in the world you don't want to advertise only to the top three percent but you want to advertise to the 100 percent because that means 33 times the money obviously if you advertise to three people and if you advertise to 100 100 divided by three is 33.33 period you know but uh 33 times the money all right and now knowing just their age their gender their income their education level their job title their marriage whether they're married they are not uh, how many children do they have how old their children are that's a lot to know but it isn't enough because it's just not enough you need to know the problem that keeps them up at night because if you know the information about them you can't do anything about that you can only know like these are the people that i want to target but in order to uh, make them problem aware, in order to make them solution aware, in order to make them desire your services, your offer, you need to know the problem that keeps them up at night. And you need to have the solution to that problem. And so number one, you need to have the problem that keeps them up at night. For example, if they don't want to work till they are, till they are 70, or they don't want to, or they want to go on a holiday with their family, but can't because their boss won't give them another day off, or maybe they want to buy the car but can't because they don't have the money. These are all of the problems that might keep them up at night. So they don't want to work till 70. They want to go on a holiday with their family but can't because boss won't give them another day off. And they want to buy the new car, the new house, the, new, the clothes, but they can't because they don't have the money. So these are all of the problems that are keeping up, keeping them up at night. That's what uh, a picture of them not able to sleep, you know, so you can imagine it better. Okay, so what you need to know is a what is their biggest dream and their desire b what is their biggest frustration and challenge they currently have c what is their biggest fear d what might their average day look like and e what makes them happy so in order to know the exact problem that they are suffering from right now and in order to create the best solution for them you first need to understand where they are where they are where they are are right now sorry so the two things that represent their current position are the B and C, which is their biggest frustration challenge and their biggest fear. So what is the thing that they are most frustrated about? Maybe they want the car, but can't because they don't have the money. They are frustrated because they don't have the money to buy the car. What is their biggest fear? Maybe their biggest fear might be that they won't ever have the money to buy the car, and so they will never be able to buy the car. What is their biggest dream and desire? It's to buy the car, right? What might their day-to-day nor average day look like you know like they wake up at 7 a.m they go to work they eat lunch at 12 blah 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 you know you just their average day what makes them happy what are their hobbies you know they like going to the uh on some trips with their family they like playing with their dog they like swimming they like playing soccer with their friends whatever it is this is like their, their pitch representation so that's their dream desire that's their frustration challenge the fear that's their average day today this is what makes them happy maybe you know some uh, trip to the lake with their family or something so actionable step right now i want you to do is take out a piece of paper and a pen and write out the answers to these five questions that we just went through what is their biggest dream desire what is their biggest frustration challenge they currently have what is their biggest fear what might their day-to-day -day look like and what makes them happy if you're asking how should i know you probably do since Let's make it real simple for you. Close your eyes and think about your ideal client or your average client that you currently have and think about the problems that they usually give you. Like when you are talking to them and they tell you their frustrations, they, their challenges, what they, what they fear, where they want to get, you'll know that the best, best than anybody. So you know what their average day looks like. You know what, what activities usually make them happy. You know what their like average desire is what their biggest frustrations are you know all of that so all you need to do is put them into pieces together and create like the average and then take out a piece of paper and a pen 
and write down the average answers to these questions. It could look something like this. So for the dream desire, maybe they want a $200,000 brand new Porsche. For the frustration and challenge, could be that they don't have the money to buy it. The fear might be that they will never have the money to buy it, and so they will never be able to uh, achieve what they want. They will never be able to buy the car that they want. Uh, their average day, they wake up at 7 a.m., they grab their phone, go and search social media. They go to the bathroom, then they brush their teeth, take their medicine, go downstairs, have breakfast with coffee. At 8.15 a.m., they leave for work. At 12 p.m., they eat lunch. Yadi yadi, at 11 p.m., they go to sleep. Make sure you do this as specifically, as precisely as possible, literally minute to minute. Make sure you cover each and every minute in their day how it looks like. It might look kind of uh, like you are some psychopath or something, but it will really give you the idea of how much time they actually have and what they are doing in the day and how you could improve the activities that they are doing in the day to make it productive. All right. And for their thing that makes them happy, maybe they like driving fast. That's maybe, that could be maybe the reason that they want a new Porsche because they want to drive uh, fast in the car. Maybe they like playing with their children. Maybe they like playing tennis. Maybe they like scuba diving, playing soccer with their friends, whatever it is. That was the your dream client. So identifying your dream client. The second step, the second part is the bait of the millionaires. So what is the bait of the millionaires? The bait of the millionaires is basically like the bone that you give the, to the dog that make he, to make him friendly and obedient. So with the bait, we are going to be selling. Basically, I didn't mention what the bait is. So the bait is something, uh, is basically an offer that you're going to be providing to your clients. So it's also called a lead magnet. Not sure if you've heard of it, a lead magnet. So basically, what I don't want you to do is when you are advertising on Facebook, I don't want you to advertise your main offer. So I don't want you to advertise your services or whatever you are selling, your offer. The most offer that we created, uh, if you haven't yet, then go watch the video video that was released before this. The link will be in the description. There is a full guide on how to create your monster offer. And so when you're advertising, I don't want you and you should never because this Many people have made this mistake and they never break through the top 1%. This is what the 99% of all of the financial advisors and planners are doing and have been doing for a long while and it never works that well, is that they advertise their offers. They go straight away into, I am providing financial services. If you want to get the new car, schedule a call with me now. You know, th this is basically what their ad usually looks like, but that's not what we want to do because you are basically what you are doing in this case is imagine it as if you are uh, going up to a stranger because you are advertising to people who don't know you. So this is an analogy. You're going up to a stranger in the park and you're asking them to marry you straight away. You know, like you just go to the park, you see the first person and just come like, hey, marry me. You know, like it doesn't work that way. Like first you need to go on a date, then you go on another date, then on another date, then you start dating, then you live together, date for five years and then you marry each other. So that's what we want to do. And if you are advertising and saying like, hey, buy now, or hey, schedule a call with me right now, you're basically just marrying strangers, you know? And so what we want to do instead is we want to give them value. We want to first date them, you know, like we want to ask them for their phone number, then we want to go on a date with them, then another date, another date, another date, we start dating. Then after five years of dating, you propose or they propose and you get married. That's basically what we want to do. And we do it in a way that we provide them free value. So we give them something for free and we keep on giving them things for free until they feel like they know us well enough that they will ask us or ask you in this case to become your clients themselves without you even, even, even having to ask for that. And the way we'll do that, the free value that will get us there is what I call the bait of the millionaires. This is the so-called lead, ma lead magnet is the free value that millionaires like Alex or Mosey or the successful agencies like King Kong have been using to build a relationship with their cold audience, build them up, nurture them and become warm leads, or boiling hot leads, literally. And you know, like they are dating together and then they ask to marry them. All right, so that's what the bait of the millionaires is. And so the bait of the millionaires is the bone that you give the dog to make him friendly and obedient. What I mean by that is the free value that you give to the dog 
to make him friendly obedient. The dog, in this case, it's an analogy, is your prospect, all right? And so with the bait, we aren't going to be selling your services. We are going to be providing value, free value. We are going to be first asking them for the phone number, then going on a date, another date, dating, then after five, 10 years, we will propose, okay? As I said, many, many advertisers on Facebook try to run ads and only sell, and they show a bunch of the features of their financial services. My services are the best. I care about my clients the most. I spend my morning eating breakfast with them, you know. I go on walks with them. I do this for them. I do this with my clients and this for my clients. I have the best results. I bring the most amount of money. I only ask for 1% and 2% of their assets. I'm really cheap, you know, like they just sell themselves on the ads. I want, don't want to do that because that's weak marketing because it's what 99% of all of the advice, advice, advisors and planners out there do, all right? Why is it bad? Again, think of it as dating. Like when you are, think of it as dating, you know, uh, you go to a stranger and you ask to marry them. Not good, we want to date them first, okay? And this is like the, the bone, you know, nice photo. You know, a dog, I love dogs. Hope you love dogs as well. I think that everybody loves dogs. Anyway, if you are saying, buy my amazing financial services right now in your ads to a stranger who has never heard of you, it's as if you walk down the street, came to the nearest stranger and asked, marry me. You know, this is exactly it. Yeah, like, you just came to the first stranger and told them, like, I'm amazing, I'm six feet, I can cook, and by the way, I'm amazing, like, not sure whether you've heard this already, but I'm amazing, and I'm amazing, and I care for my uh, for my uh, partners the most, and all of, if you haven't heard, I'm amazing, you know, like, this is basically what most of the financial advisors and planners do. We don't want to do that. We want to provide value. We first want to ask for their phone number, date them, go on a bunch of dates. After we date, we propose, then we marry them. Okay? So that's good enough. So, as I said, nobody nobody would say yes if you just like came up to them as a stranger and said, marry me. You know, like majority wouldn't. And so what do you want to do instead? Is you know, go on a date, another date, another date, five dates, you are start dating, then after five years you marry them, all right? So what we want to do instead is give free value. I talked about this. And yeah. Okay. And this debate of the millionaires. It's the debate of free value that you give to your dream client. So the dream client that we found on the first step, you basically give them just free value. You are, uh, instead of asking them to buy from you on your ads, you are basically just giving them free value. Now what the free value might be is exactly what you'll be going in the next step. So crafting the bait. So we want to provide free value with our bait, but how? What even is the bait? Like, what can you actually use as free value to give to them? To make it simple, the bait could be many things, but here are a few things I think are the best. So the bait could be an ebook. It could be a free consultation. It could be a video, a PDF, an interview, a webinar, a podcast, whatever. It's an ebook, video, free consultation. So basically you could do something like give them value in a form of ebook, which could be like, the seven steps to get a Porsche, you know, like something that will get them the results that they want, like something, some of those problems that you listed out for your dream client, you basically give them free value on how they could achieve that. Or maybe you could make a video about it, you know, like how to get a new Porsche in 52 weeks and you make a video about that. Or you could maybe give them a free consultation with you, like 30 a 30 minute consultation with you in which you would go through them through the problems that they have they would ask you about how you how they could solve that and you give them like some value you know like you go on the call they tell you uh they want to buy the new porsche and you will tell them great what you need is this 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 you need this investment portfolio uh this investment strategy and blah blah blah, blah. and at the end you would say something like if you want I provide that, so if you want that, you can just hire me and I could help you get the Porsche in 52 weeks instead of 104 weeks, you know? So that's basically what the bait is. By providing these baits, you give out a free value that teaches them something that's relevant to the pain they are experiencing. So if they want to buy a new Porsche, then your bait could be something like seven steps to get a Porsche in 52 weeks without having money, you know? And you would make a video or a PDF about it going step by step through the seven steps they need to take in order to get the Porsche without having any money right now. This could be like the example, for example, like the seven steps, you know, like step number one, track your spending. Step number two, create a budgeting system. Step number, step number three, 
start putting some money aside every month. Step four, invest that money. Step five, water your investments. Step six, be patient. Step seven, get a brand new Porsche. That, that's basically what the step-by-step -step could look like, but you could just expand it for a little longer, like a page or two, and that could work really well. Like you could go like track your spending and you would tell them exactly how to track their spending, some tools that you recommend, create a budgeting system, how to create a budgeting system. This is the best way I recommend a budgeting system. How to start putting money aside to every month, you know, like create a second account, second bank account, and every month transfer some money there or pay yourself first before paying the taxes. Anything of that sort, okay? All right, so now we have our bait, but what should we do now? Well, we need to advertise it so that people see it. I will give you full guides on writing your copy and how to advertise on Facebook so you don't have to worry about things. Uh, everything will be there, so you will get that completely for free. But simply because it's so important, I will cover the most important thing when it comes to your copy, copywriting, which is the text, which you're writing your text for your ads, and it's your headline as well as your subheadline. So let's go. Yeah, that's Facebook, and that is your basically that is the headline. So this is like your average. Uh, not your average, but this is like the newspaper. This is the headline, and this is the subheadline. So headline is like the main. We probably know what's the headline, but the main name. Subheadline is the below the headline. Next, the second most important part of your copy. So the headline. In order to make the best headline, you first need to understand your dream clients' dream goals, frustrations, dreams, and pains. If you remember, we did that already in the step one, so you can use that. By the way, this is a really important saying that a very, very, very great uh, copywriter said. And that is that when you have a dollar that you are spending, uh, you spend your first 80 cents on your headline. So the headline is the most important part of everything because if you don't uh, write a persuasive headline that gets them to click on your ad, then nothing matters. And so when you have a dollar, make sure you spend those 80 cents or like when you have a dollar, you are spending your 80 cents on the headline already. So the headline is the most important part of everything. So make sure that your headline is at po on point. If anything, your headline must be on point. Because if it's not, and it's not persuading persuasive enough and not persuading your prospects to click, then nobody will see it. Nobody will get your lead magnet. Nobody will get your free buy. Nobody will get your bait of the millionaires. And everything is just will just go to hell. So this is the step-by-step -step on creating your headline. So. First and foremost, we'll be using their deepest desire. So if their des deepest desire is that they want a new Porsche, then you can begin your headline, uh, your headlines creation could start like get a Porsche. Now this isn't complete, so like don't just write get a Porsche. The second step is to, you need to force them to read it by using words like secret or steps or exposed or revealed. So like when you see all of the uh advertisements that were on uh, all the newspapers that were really successful there was always some kind of uh you know like this secret revealed or this celebrity is exposed or this celebrity is revealed revealed this you know like and everybody went on that so leverage that so that will get them burning with intrigue and desire to find out more so let's take the word steps in this case so we got get a Porsche, which is their deepest desire. Now we use this, the word steps, and so we get steps to get a Porsche, which is still not complete. The third step is to use numbers to make it more tangible, because people love to uh, get a touch of what it is. And when you say steps to get a to get a Porsche, and when you say seven steps to get a Porsche, then they understand that okay, there are only seven steps to get a Porsche. But if you say like steps to get a Porsche, then they are like. Is there one step? Is there 10 steps? 200, 1,000 steps? You know, like, so when you are writing your headline, make sure you write down exact numbers so that they understand it the best. So, um, as I said, steps to get a Porsche is pretty average, but how about seven steps to get a Porsche in 52 weeks? That's, that's much better, right? Because it's tangible. They know that there's only seven steps and that it takes them only 52 weeks to get a Porsche. Now, this is still not complete, by the way. The fourth step is to use their biggest frustration to add even more spark into it. So um, instead of saying just seven steps to get a Porsche in 52 weeks, which is like much better than it was, how about seven steps to get a Porsche in 52 weeks without having any money? Well, that's pretty amazing, right? Like they, they'll be thinking like, what? There are only seven steps to get a Porsche and it only takes 52 weeks and I don't even need to have any money right now? Like that's just so much better, right? This still isn't complete. The fifth step is to make it all about them and make it specific. So a little like uh, 
secret reveal, they care only about themselves and nothing else. This is a concept that I got from the book uh, How to Win Friends and Influence People that by, by Dale Carnegie. Uh, so they only care about themselves, you need to make it all about them, all right? So you tell them it's for them and specifically for them and that they'll be 100% sure to get it. So say something like seven steps every whatever your dream client could be. So it could be seven steps every 35 year old man from Texas needs to take right now to get a Porsche in 52 weeks without having any money, you know? So when a 35 year old man from Texas sees it, he's like, like what the hell? Like I can, like me, like it's specifically for me, I can get a Porsche in 52 weeks by just three steps without even having any money. Like that's just amazing. So you could say, and to make it even more specific, like this is uh, an example, seven financial steps every married Texan must take to drive a Porsche in 52 weeks, starting from zero dollars. This is a pretty good headline. You know, so every married Texan will now see that there are only seven financial steps that he needs to take to drive a Porsche in 52 weeks, starting with zero dollars. Now we aren't even saying like without money, but we actually said zero dollars, which also puts the tangible amount, which we said in the step number three in C, use numbers. So we even said that zero dollars, like you don't even like without money, but zero dollars. And that's really a great piece of uh, headline. So we added specificity in three ways. And that was we added married Texan, which is demographic. We added financial steps, which are like, what steps? What area of life? Because if you just say like seven steps, every married Texan must take, then they're like, like what steps? Like what steps should I take? Should I like be a healthier person or should I financial steps? Like what steps? But when you say financial steps, then they know like, okay, I need financial services. This is it. Let me see. And we also said zero dollars by no money. Do you mean like $10,000? You mean like less than $1,000? Do you mean flat broke? So when we added zero dollars, then they are sure that they not, don't need to have even a dollar in order to get the Porsche in 52 weeks without any dollars. Yeah, now imagine what they'll do when they found out that this lead magnet, these seven steps to, to get uh, a Porsche in 52 weeks without having a dollar, that they can actually find out how to do that for free. Like they'll be crazy, it will be crazy for them. So that was the headline. Now go through the sub-headline. So your sub-headline, like your headline, has its job and is extremely important. So what you need to make sure is that the sub-headline, which is also called the sub-head point, doesn't matter, your sub-headline needs to explain the meaning of your headline. And so your sub-headline needs to explain and complete your headline. So when you say the seven financial steps every married Texan must take to get a Porsche, then you need to explain how that's possible because a claim without a uh, without a proof is just a claim. It's nothing, you know. Like it's as if you said, like, I went to Mars. Like, okay, how can we believe you? But if you actually showed us a picture of you at Mars or something, we would probably believe you. You know. So uh, your subheadline needs to explain the your headline. So your if if this is your headline, seven financial steps every married man blah 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 should take to get a Porsche. Your subheadline could be something like, think you can't get a Porsche without a single dollar? Let me show you how in just 50, 52 weeks. This is a pretty good subheadline because it tells them that, okay, you can show me how, so let me see, okay? So this is how you create the bait of the millionaires. So actionable step number two. Take five minutes off, literally set up a timer for five minutes and think about what you could use as a bait for your prospect. So would you write a PDF for them? Would, you, would it be an ebook? Would you record a video? Would you give them a free consultation? Would it be a webinar they could join? Whatever you could do. And after that, write your first headline. It doesn't need to be perfect, just a few word headline, four to 12 words according to the headlines roadmap. So for whatever lead magnet, for whatever bait you use, uh, write a headline for that. Pretty simple, right? It doesn't need to be perfect, like you're gonna be using that right now just so you can get the practicing, okay? So that was number three, creating your headline. Now let's go to through the fourth, uh, fourth step, which is acquiring your dream client's contact info. So we already know what we don't want to do, which is to ask our dream clients to buy straight away from them our ad. You know, like we don't want to ask the stranger on the street to marry us, so we don't want to ask for the sale straight away. And we don't also, this is another important thing, we don't want to send them to our landing page or our website straight away because it's also a form of selling. So if you have a landing page for your services, 
that you are maybe like there are some benefits written out that they could do don't send them there either because it's not marriage but it's lighter it's something like asking the stranger to date you you know like not even a date but just go to them like hey date me you know like um it also doesn't work instead of getting like 99.9999% saying no to your marriage maybe like 90% or 99% will say no if you say like date me you know like it still sucks so we don't want to do that so the question is what do we want to do instead and so what we want to do is it's an analogy again so let's say instead of asking uh, them to marry you or date you you would ask them for a phone number most would probably say yes right like if you just went up to the stranger and say like hey could i get your phone number or you could just compliment it like hey your dress is really nice could i get your phone number probably like one fourth of them would probably give you their number right so you will get much higher success rate probability but it's still only 25 percent right like we want to go deeper we want those 100 percent and that's why with this we aren't even asking for their number with this bait we aren't even asking for the number we are giving free value the word is giving this is really important giving giving free value uh we aren't asking for anything so we aren't asking them to marry us we aren't asking them for a date we are even asking them for a phone number. We are just giving. We are just giving free value. So imagine it. It's as if you walked around, you know, the park with a box of donuts. You know, like you're just carrying both donuts. You would just come to the first person like, hey, would you like a free donut? You know, like anybody, like everybody. I would say that like 100% of everyone would take you up on that offer and like say like, yeah, thank you. I'll take a donut. And they would eat a donut, you know. So this is what we are doing with the bait. We are basically running around with these types of donuts. And we're just offering them to every single person in the park. You know, like, would you like a donut? We aren't asking them to marry us. We aren't asking them to date us. We, haven't, we even, even aren't asking for their phone number. We are just walking around with a box of, like, really nice looking donuts and, like, asking them, would you like a donut? Okay. And so what you want to do with your ads is step by step. Step number one, promote the millionaire's bait, which is the free value that you're giving to them. So it's basically the, the box of donuts. So... Again, your millionaire's bear could be the video, the podcast, the PDF, the ebooks, the consultation call, the webinar, whatever it is. That's the thing that you want to be promoting and not your core offer or your landing page. So, step one, we are going to set up our ads and we are going to promote the millionaire's bait. We are going to promote the video. We are going to promote the PDF. We are going to promote the ebook. We are going to promote the uh, meeting. We are going to promote the webinar, whatever it is. Step number th two is give them an opt-in page where they will fill in their contact info which is only their email address and their name and once they do we'll send them the bait to their email address you know so um you set up your ads and you say like you can get this free uh pdf you can get this pdf for free which is the pdf of seven financial steps to every texan man must take to drive a porsche in 52 weeks without having a single door and you would say like all you need to do in order to do this is put in your email address and your name so that I can send you the the PDF, the video, whatever, your bait to your email address. And once you do, you collect their email address. Collect their email address. We are putting in the opt-in page to acquire their contact info. So this is the primary reason for this chapter. So chapter number four is called acquiring their contact info. And this is how we do it. We create this opt-in page where they put in their email address their name and you send them the bait and you can say that that's the reason why they're inputting their email address so that you can send them the bait but the reason for that isn't just so you can send them the bait but so you can get their email address and they uh give you the permission to send them emails okay the reason we are collecting their emails is not because we want to send them the bait but for another reason the reason is to start a process called email marketing so sending them emails which we're advertising through so we collect their emails, they give us their emails uh, willingly, so we can advertise to them, we can send them emails, and we are going to use that opportunity to advertise to them without using retargeting on Facebook, you know? Because you can use the same thing on Facebook, but you have to pay for it. I don't want to talk about this at all, because I don't want to get you confused. All you need to know, we are collecting their emails so that we can start email marketing, which is advertising through them to them for free on email, okay? Since sending emails is free, it's much better than Facebook advertising. So it's literally fr for free. You are advertising for free. You are paying zero dollars and you are advertising to them. So that's just great. 
Anyway, step number four. So on step number three, we collected your email address. On step number four, we begin the email marketing. And again, just as with our uh, beginning of our Facebook ads, we aren't going to be selling our services. No, we still aren't selling our services. We are still going to provide even more value. And that's how we get clients. So we still, even when we have their emails and we are advertising for free, we still aren't saying, hey, these are my services. They are amazing. Schedule a call with me now so that we can, sorry, or buy my services now so that you can get, become my client. We st still aren't doing that. Uh, I'll be releasing a full lesson on email marketing so you don't have to worry about the thing. I'll go through everything there step by step. How to set it up, how to write the copy, structure, emails, marketing strategy, how often was to send, when, how to leverage your bait and everything. So we'll go through everything on the email marketing part, but all you need to know is that even when we are sending out the emails, we still aren't selling our services. We are still providing free value to them. We are still, because this is basically the first step we took. We got their contact info, so we basically asked them for their phone number and then they gave us the phone number. But when they gave you their phone number, you what you, you just don't just go home, pick up your phone number, your, your phone, call their phone number and say like, hey, marry me. Like that's, that's still useless. So what you would do is you would call them and you would ask them to go on a date with you or something, right? So we still aren't asking them to buy. We are still going to provide more free value to them. Okay, so that was basically what we want to do with our ads instead. So we want to promote promote our bait. We want to give them an opt-in page that they book in their email into. And once we collect their emails, we send them the bait and then we can start our e email marketing, which is like the big overview, the simple, uh, sim simpler part, the simpler way of saying it. But it's, it's kind of more difficult, but we'll go over that later. So that's basically all you need to know right now. Now, fifth step is your monster offer. So, yeah, that's your, uh, that's the monster offer. Uh, this is a, a really important quote that I got from Alex Ramosi, and that's, make an offer so good, they'll feel stupid saying no. So that's basically what you should be doing with your offer, is to make it so great that they would feel idiotic, they would feel stupid to say no to you. I made a full guide on how to create your monster offer. So you don't have to worry about the thing. You can just go check it there and we'll go into depth in that one. So we went deep into your research of your dream client. We went over how to make and price your monster offer. We went over how to enhance your offer with scarcity, urgency, bonuses, guarantees, how to name it. So it's really a deep dive and I recommend you go watch it. So I'll put the link down in the description as well. So you don't have to look for it. Okay. So you don't have to like, where it is, where is it? Like, I'll just put it down there. You won't have to worry about things. thing. Just click there if you want. Okay. So that's the deep dive, but. I will cover here briefly uh, the most important parts of your offer so that you have an idea because I think it's really important to get the broad view. Okay, so this is basically the most important parts you need to know about your monster offer. So only sell what people want to buy and not what you want to sell because they only care about themselves. So what you need to do is get in their shoes, which is another thing I got, another concept I got from the book How to Be Influence and Influence People is only sell what other people want to buy, not what you want to sell. So you need to get in their shoes, understand the problem that they are suffering from and come up with the idea of what would I want in their situation if I had this exact problem. Don't be like, I want to sell my services because I want to make money. Or even if you want to say like, I want to sell these services so that I can provide them better value or I can get them whatever. You only want to do that once you understand the problem that they are suffering from and the dream outcome that they want to achieve. Once you understand that, you can create an offer that is that is structured, tailored precisely to the problem that they are suffering from so that you have the solution to the problem that they, that they are suffering from. For example, the problem that they might be suffering from is that they want to retire, that they don't want to work till they are 70. So your solution to that problem could be uh, you can retire them 30 years early so they don't have to work till 70. That could be your solution. And since you understand the problem, you created a solution for them. So you got in their shoes, you realize that they don't want to work till 70 and you create a solution that would reverse that and get them retired 30 years earlier, right? So only sell what people want to buy, what they want. That doesn't mean that it's bad that they only care about themselves because you can leverage that. Because if they only care about themselves, then if you sell something that only uh, goes about them, then you're golden because all you need to do is get in their shoes, understand their problem and sell the implementation, sell the solution. Okay. So the first step in creating your monster offer is to list out every single problem your dream client has and create a solution for each and every problem that they have. It needs to be specific. The more specific, the better. So 
let's say that they want to retire 70 years early, you can't just say like retire early because if you want to make it as as powerful as possible, you need to say exactly specifically. So they don't want to work till 70, they want to retire early. They want to retire 30 years early. Okay, so again, I have a full deep dive on most dropper, but the first step is to list out every problem. So you could just make like three columns and, or like two columns and just write down in the first one the problems that they have and in the second one your solutions to that. Okay, so that's basically what you could do. That's the first step. The second step is that you need to increase the value of your solutions and we have the four ingredients for this, which is their dream result, the success possibility, their time delay and exertion and sacrifice. Uh, the way you want to do this is that you want to understand the dream result that they want to get to and you want to structure your offer in a way that gets them their dream result. When you do that, they see it as more uh, valuable because you actually get them what they want. Success possibility is how likely are they succeed with it. So let's say they are going to a casino, they probably aren't very likely to succeed, right? Like they could probably make a lot of money and be able to retire early, but the probability of them succeeding in actually like, you know, like winning a lot of money in casino is probably not very high. So you want to make it as uh, certain for them as possible. You need to make it 100% certain that they will actually achieve the goal that they want. If it's the, the Porsche, you make them aware that it's 100% certain that they will get the Porsche in 52 weeks when they work with you, okay? Time delay is how long will it take them? Will it take them 52 weeks? Will it take them 52 years? Will it take them a month, 10 months? Again, like it's the time delay and creatures, oh, sorry, humans are creatures that love uh, things that are really quick and really easy. And so the quicker you can make it, the better. Exertion and sacrifice is basically how hard do they have to try, how much do they have to sacrifice in order to get the result that you gave them, which is the dream result. How hard do they have to try? As I said, people are creatures of easiness and quickness. So if you make if you can make it as easy as possible for them, so like if they don't even have to breathe in order to get the Porsche, then you've made the ultimate offer. So these are the four ingredients. Again, we went uh, much deeper into it in the monster offer video, so you can just go there, but it's like a big overview. The third step is that you need to bundle the solutions together. So once you created your solutions, you know, like you wrote down your problems and your solutions, then you enhance your solutions with these four ingredients. Then all you need to do is bundle the solutions together and name them. So the solutions that you bundled up together, you it's basically imagine it as a as a big roof and you put all of the solutions under that one roof and so they are all bundled under that one roof and you name the roof and that's your monster offer basically. Naming is extremely important by the way. The sixth, the fourth step is to enhance your offer and transform it into a monster offer. And there are five spells, I say magical spells that you can enhance your offer with. And those are scarcity. Scarcity is function of time, so a function of quantity. So it's there are only five. I have only five spots available. You know, like you have financial services and you have only five spots available. You can say that in your uh, advertising, and it will create scarcity. Urgency is a function of time, so it's only available till the end of the month. It's only available till the twentieth of February or whatever it is. So when you say that, they will feel urgency. They will feel like, oh, I. I can't miss out on this special offer that will give me this Porsche in 52 weeks. That's urgency. The third spell is bonuses, which is free additions to your core offer, which you could, the free additions could be like free cheat sheets, calculators, ch ch checklists, trackers, whatever it is, just some bonuses that you give like for free along with your uh, offer. The fourth spell is guarantees. What guarantees do is they eliminate all risk. So you could say something like, if you don't achieve it, so if you don't get a Porsche in 52 weeks, I give you back every single penny. Or if you don't get a Porsche in 52 weeks, I work for free until you do. Okay. And the fifth spell is a name. So it gives your offer that extra shrink, you know, like shrink, like that offer is just perfect. It just transforms it completely. It's the same thing as with your headline. So uh, if you said like the 52 week dream Porsche owners protocol, like they would kill for that. But if you said like, get the dream Porsche, you know, like they probably wouldn't be so compelled. But if you say like the 52 week dream Porsche owners protocol, like they'll be like, wow, like that's really exclusive. Like I need that, you know? So name is, naming is really important and you need to play with that a lot. And you need to test a bunch of things. Just test, 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 test. And you see what works, then you use that, okay? 
but there are a few like bonus tips that I'm gonna give you. Only guarantee what you know you can deliver and make it crazy. So if you know you can't get them the Porsche in 52 weeks, then don't say that. If you can get them the Porsche in 104 weeks, then say get the Porsche in 104 weeks. So only guarantee what you know you can deliver, okay? Use a bold and specific name. So don't just say get a car, because like if you say like get a car in 52 weeks, like nobody will care. But if you say like get a new Porsche in 52 weeks without having a single dollar or you get your money back, like that's a bold and specific and really uh, persuasive name. Another bonus point, always focus on your strengths and guarantee that. So if your strength is that you can get them the results quickly, then use speed as your the thing that you're guaranteeing. So you could say in 12 weeks, if your uh, strength is in delivering the best quality results, but it takes a, few, a long time to get it, then focus on your dream outcomes. So if, if you can retire them 30 years early, but it takes them a while, then use that, okay? And it's really important, make sure that you market and advertise your bonuses as bonuses, as additions, not as a part of your offer. So whenever you are advertising and you say like, this is my offer and this is what you get, you get this pen as a bonus. Don't say like the pen is a part of the offer, but say you get this offer and this as a bonus. Don't say like you get, you get this, but you get this and this. Okay, so make sure you advertise your bonuses as bonuses, not as a part of your offer. So in essence, this is like the big overview, your monster offer needs to be rational. So the reason you are offering it needs to make sense. So when you are advertising, it needs to make sense. So if you are advertising uh, on Christmas, then if you say this is the Christmas offer, then it will make sense to them. Like, okay, he's offering this because it's on Christmas. Basically, you could say something like, um, I'm offering this offer on Monday because Monday is offer day. You know, like, even if you say something completely stupid, as long as you have a reason, if, if, even if it's the stupidest thing, like, you could say, like, Wednesday is the day me and my best friend met 35 years ago. And that's why I'm offering this offer. Like, it couldn't, it, it doesn't even need to be true. But as long as you have a reason, then you can offer that offer. Because if you just put out an offer without a reason, then they will be skeptical. They will ask, like, like why why, why is this person even offering this offer? Like, there must be a reason they are say, offering it. And when literally when you even say something like Wednesday is the day me and my best friend met, so I'm offering this, then they will be okay with that because they will say like, okay, this one thing in their mind would just disappear and like, like the reason uh, he's offering this is because he met with their friends, okay? But you can leverage like when Christmas, say it's the Christmas offer, uh, when it's Halloween, it's the Halloween offer, when it's the Easter, it's the Easter offer and the offer could be still the same, it's just the name changes. B, your offer needs to give value. So... Let them know your offer will solve exactly the problem that they are suffering from. So uh, if they want to retire 30 years early, then tell them that they can retire 30 years early. And as I said, you need to actually show them proof because if you just say that you can do that, it's like as if you said you went to Mars. But if you actually showed pictures that you went to Mars, they would believe you. So make sure that you provide testimonials of other people similar to them doing that and some pictures of other people doing it, okay? C, your offer needs to be more expensive than your competition. Why? Because we want to be different from our competition and we don't, we don't want to play the game of who has lower price. Because when we are offering our services a lower price, then you make no money whatsoever. And when you charge high prices, then you are in a competition of your own without any competitors and you're literally playing a single game. You know, so we want to be more expensive than our competition. We want to offer bonuses, additions, that's, uh, additions that are on top of what they normally would get and make sure you present them as bonuses. This is a part of your raw offer. Then we want to use scarcity and urgency to make them aware that your offer is limited by both time and quantity. So there's only five spots left and they are only left till the end of this month or till the end of the 30th of December or something. Uh, make sure you use a super guarantee that eliminates all risks. So if you don't get a portion in 52 weeks, <clears throat> you get your money back. Or if you don't get a portion in 52 weeks, I work for free until you do. Also make sure that your offer is named properly, make it bold, make it specific, so they know exactly what they're getting. So they aren't getting a car, but they're getting a Porsche, a new Porsche for $200,000. By the way, you need to have good copy, because if your copy sucks, then nobody will save you, not even the best Facebook advertising pro under the sun. So your copy must be on point. And don't worry, uh, I have a full guide on copywriting, which is completely free, so you can just check it out once it comes out and it will give you everything you need to write the perfect copy, persuasive copy. Right. 
Also, definitely don't use these features as an offer. So as I said, great customer service or great quality or you're innovative or you're responding to clients' needs. Why? Because they don't care. What they want is results. They don't want your great customer service or your best quality or that you are innovative or that you are responding to them. They want the Porsche. Okay? And I have a saying that what doesn't hurt help, uh, what doesn't help hurts. And when you say that you have great customer service or whatever, it doesn't help them in any way. And so the only thing it does is that it hurts and it hurts you, not them. So make sure you don't use these features as an offer, uh, as a, a features of your offer because it just sucks. Okay. So that was number five, uh, which was your monster offer. Sixth step is traffic. So we know the way they want to structure our advertising, don't we? So this is basically the big overview. So the first step that we want to do is create our millionaire's bait and your monster offer. How we learned before. So we created a millionaire's offer, which is the PDF, the video, the consultation call, whatever it is, you just create it and you make a title for it. And you create your monster offer, which is that you uh, wrote down the problems, the solutions, you bundle them up together, you enhance them, and then you used scarcity, urgency, bonuses, guarantees, and you named it, and you created your, uh, your monster offer. The second step is that we promote our millionaire's bait, not our services. So with Facebook ads, we say that get this free ebook now. Okay. Then you have an opt-in page where they input their email address and their name. And once they do, you send them the bait into their email address and you collect their email address. When they click on the bait, it sends them to a landing page where they can read or watch your bait. So you don't just say like get the bait and once they uh, input their emails you don't send them anything you actually send them a bait you actually send them the thing that you created okay and in the bait obviously you need to provide the value and you need to actually uh, provide exactly what you said so when you said there are the seven steps to get a porsche but only six of them are valid and one of those steps is useless then your offer then your bait is shit okay so it needs to deliver on the landing page, you give them an option to book a call with you. So on the landing page, when they go, they read or watch the bait. Then you say something like, if you want to learn more about this, then you can book a 30 minute call with me through this link. That's basically your call to, call to action. That's like traffic, picture of traffic. That was the sixth step. So we, on the landing page, you gave them an option to book a call with you. Now, if they don't book a call, if, if they do, and they go on a call with you, you, close them, you get a client, great. If they don't book a call with you, it doesn't matter because we still have their email address. So because we collect their, their email address, we can advertise with them for free. And so what we do is we start our email marketing by sending them a bunch of valuable free content. And here they're asking them to book a 30 minute call with you anyway. And so you're just giving them a bunch of value, you know, like uh, some more related stuff to your services, like how to retire early, how to buy the new clothes, how to get a new Porsche, how to invest uh, most uh, efficiently, uh, how to use a budgeting system, how to do A, B, C, Z, whatever. And here and there, you always ask them for to book a call with you, you know, a 30 minute discovery call so that you just kind of go on a call with them and you get to know them better. Basically, it's a sales call. And so they either book it or not. This is 10A, which is like the better part. If they book a call and go on a meeting with them, and if you close them on the call, then voila, you just got a client. If you don't close them on the call, then don't worry, just send them more free content and eventually they will book a call with you. And when they do, they are 99% sure to actually become your clients because they will know that you are selling something. And when they want it, they'll come to you because they are aware that you are selling it. So that's it. It's really that simple. It's, it's really nothing difficult. It's really simple. And so all that's left for you is to start and go step by step. So the first one is to promote your weight. How? Oh, well, Facebook ads, obviously. So again, I'll make a full how to run Facebook ads for you, uh, a guide, which is completely free. So get everything there. Uh, once it comes out, you can check it out. But there are a few things I need you to understand right now, because if you get them wrong, then all of your efforts will be lost. So these are like, what are the goals of your things? So the job of your ad, which is the ad that's promoting your bait is to get the click, nothing else. So when you are promoting, when you are putting out the ad, all the, the entire job of your ad is to get the click is for them to click on it okay the job of your opt-in page which you have is to only sell the opt-in so that they only input their name and their email address nothing else so that they only input their email address and their name that's the only thing that your opt-in page needs to worry about the landing page that they get to when they uh, open the bait is to only 
for them to watch or read your bait. So whether it's your PDF, whether it's your video, maybe it's your consultation call, the whole reason of your landing page is for them to just read and watch the free content. And maybe they book a call with you or they don't. The bait's job is to provide as much value as possible. So make sure that you aren't something like, oh, this is, this is really important. I'm not going to share this with them because this is a secret that I can offer in my services. No. Give them every single secret that you have under your belt. Give it to them for free. Because once you do, they will feel like, wow. Like if this is free, then imagine how amazing his paid content is. Okay, so the paid job is to provide as much value as possible. When you're doing the email marketing, the email marketing's job is to provide value. Again, no holding back, just providing just straight up value. You know, like how to buy the clothes, how to be able to book, uh, how to be able to buy a new Porsche, how to be able to buy this new house, how to retire early, how to this, 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 this problem, and this solution to the problem. And B is to sell the meeting with you. So uh, again, make sure that you aren't selling your services uh, through your email marketing. You aren't saying like, uh, buy my services right now. You are saying, if you want to learn more, you can book a 30 minute discovery call with me where I could go or I could guide you step by step through more. I could explain more. And once you go on the call, the calls meeting, this is the calls meeting, the calls job, is to make them feel the pain and frustration that they are feeling. So they need to come to the understanding that they are hurting a lot, they are in a lot of pain, and that there is a solution, that they need to solve that pain. And once they understand that they need to solve a pain, then they need to understand that there is a solution to that pain. And once they understand that there is a solution, you need to say that you have the solution to that pain. Once you understand that you have the solution, you need to persuade them that your solution is actually the solution that will solve all of their pains. Once, you, once they understand that, once they're aware of that, then they are sold on you, okay? Yeah, they will feel the urge to solve it. Yeah, this is a pretty good analogy. So it's the same thing as imagine you were really, wor you were at work and you were really hungry and like out of the blue, a huge grilled chicken just fell on your plate, you know, like you just fly out, broke the window and landed on your uh, on your table and you were like starving, what would you do? You'd probably eat it, right? And this is exactly the same thing that your prospects will do because they will feel immense pain, they will be hungry, they'll be really hungry and straight away from the blue you will say like, I have the food, you know, like here is the grilled chicken, you can eat it if you want and they'll be like, yes, let me eat the grilled chicken, let me get your services, let me solve this pain, this problem. And so once they understand that they are sold, okay, they'll feel the pain, the frustration, and suddenly the solution will appear in front of them. And so the goal of your sales meeting isn't to sell your services, but is to make them aware of the problem, of their frustrations and their pains, and to make them aware that you have the solution, that you have the solution to the problem and the pain and the frustration. And by the way, you can't just show them, you know, like you can't just show them like, here is the grilled chicken. Like you can't just tell them like, you are hungry. No, they need to actually feel the hunger. They need to come to the realization that they are hungry themselves. And you do that by showing them maybe like pictures of food, you know, and they are like, oh, I'm really hungry. You need to make them aware that they have a problem. You need to make them aware by asking questions. I have a full uh, guide on sales, which is a free guide again, which will go through exactly how to structure your sales calls. So it's completely free. Once it comes out, you can check it out and everything will be there, okay? This is how your prospects need to uh, feel. This is how they need to react when they come to the realization that you have the solution. All right, like, oh, like you have got the solution. Let me eat your chicken right now. Yeah. And so that was number six, that was traffic. Number seven, the last step is email takeover. So this is actually the email marketing. So after we created our bait, our Facebook ads, started running our Facebook ads, we promoted our bait, we collected their email address with their opt-in page, they landed on the landing page, they read or watched the bait. All that's left is to send the emails. And this is what we call the email marketing. And we need email marketing sequence. How? Well, there'll be a full group blueprint on email marketing that I'll be releasing. So it's completely free again. So once it comes out, you can just see, watch it and everything will be there. But just so you have a general idea of what we will need in order to do this, I will show you a bunch of, uh, I will give you a bunch of information just so you have an idea of what we actually need. So for email marketing, we need an email address, 
from which we'll send the emails. Obviously, like in order to send emails, you actually have to have an email address of yourself. Then we'll need a tool that will allow us to send the emails. Then we'll need a well-written copy, well-written emails that will get your prospects opening the emails, reading their emails and taking action on your emails, which is booking the call. And then we'll need an email marketing sequence, which is basically like a routine, you know, like when are we sending the emails? How long are we waiting in between the time we are sending the emails? How many emails are we sending per week? Uh, how many emails are we providing value in and how many emails are we asking for them to book a call with us so basically like a routine there are many things of course under like these main four that you need to consider uh, so we will go through all of the smaller stuff in the email marketing uh blueprint so once it comes out you can watch that completely okay completely for free so a conclusion of today's video. So today we went through quite a lot, but I would say that once you grasp the big idea of it, it's really not that difficult. So a little overview of what we went through today. So we went through the understanding your dream client. So we went through their biggest desire, their problem, their frustration, you know, the thing that makes them happy, their average day. We first need to understand our dream client. Then we went to the debate of the millionaires. So we understood this is the free value that we need to provide. And the free value could be in, in the form of PDF video, consultation call, a podcast, a webinar. Then we created our bait and we created basically the headline and the subheadline. Then we went to acquiring your dream client's contact info, which is how to get their email address through an opt-in page. Then we went through our own monster offer, which is an offer that is so good they feel stupid saying no. So we went through creating our solutions, then our problems to those solutions, uh, enha enhancing those solutions, then bundling up those solutions into a monster offer and then uh, throwing magical spells on the offer, you know, so we threw a bunch of magical spells, as I say, which is like scarcity, urgency, bonuses, guarantees and name. Then we went through traffic, so the 11 steps to success. So we create our offer and our monster offer, and, sorry, our monster offer and our bait, our millionaire's bait, millionaire's bait. then we advertise our, our bait then we get an opt-in page where they input their email address we collect their email address and we send them the bait they go on the bait on the landing page they watch the bait they can book a call they don't have to then we start email marketing we give them value and they can book a call or not if they do they go on a call they either you either close them or you don't and you want to make sure that the call is structured in a way that uh, makes them come to the realization that they have a problem and you have the solution and step number seven was the email email takeover so we went through the basic four elements which is that you need an email address that you'll be sending your emails from you need a tool that will be able to send the emails you need a good copy and you need a routine by the way if this seems like a lot to handle since i understand it it might be quite overwhelming so if you are certain that you want to go this route using this strategy of facebook ads of lead magnet of the bait of the millionaire's bait you know you want to use the millionaire's bait and you want to get 15 to 25 new clients this way in 90 days for a financial practice. But it seems like a lot to handle and it's really difficult, which I'm not going to lie it is because there's a lot of competition. And this is an analogy I use. You'll be like a newborn chick swimming in a tank full of sharks. Uh, then we can help you succeed with your Facebook ads because we are the great white shark in the tank. So we could be like your guardian. Uh, so in our Facebook advertising agency, Copyfina, we specialize in helping financial advisors and planners acquire 15 to 25 new clients in 90 days without, without you having to lift a finger. So you wouldn't have to worry about a single thing of this because we would do everything for you. So you wouldn't even need to like do any of this stuff yourself. We would do it for you. So if that's something like you or someone you know might use, then you can just click the first link below and you can schedule a quick 15, 20 minute call with me. So uh it's discovery call we we'll just kind of go through like whether we are a good fit whether we could help you or not whether we could help maybe your friend that you know could use your uh, the, our services uh yeah we could just go through that sounds fair enough also as i mentioned at the beginning of this video i made for you a free notion template which is like the free f uh, written format of this video so everything that we went through this video is written out uh, so it's completely free, no email sign up or anything. You just go down below and there'll be a link for it. So you can just click that and get it completely for free. I hope you'll enjoy that. Anyway, I hope that you learned a lot from today's video and why I found this guide very valuable. And we'll see each other in the next video for which I'm really looking forward to. Not so much for the video, but seeing you there, of course. Uh, but until then, have a great rest of your day and I'll see you then. So see you. Bye bye.